This video is a piece of a longer tutorial uh, found on my blog. You can follow the descriptions if you don't have the text in front of you. Uh, it's kind of here to help you understand how everything fits together. So don't use this tutorial uh, as it is, as just a video. Make sure that you follow the text and the source code as well. So, as I said, this video is all about uh, giving you some of the more technical details around how the plugin works and how it's integrated with Unity. So first of all, you need to have Unity in front of you. And in this example game world, uh, we're having an NPC which we want to give voice. So first of all, you can see that around it, it got a trigger zone. We want it to start a listening session and start listening for these questions if the player inside of the, is inside of this trigger zone. So this is how you define the questions and this is how you define the answers. So element 2 is a question there with element 2 in the answers adds the answer to it. It's also referring to a canvas and a text element to hide and show the different questions you can ask so if I play the game now, I can walk around and I can walk up to it. And you can see that the questions that we added to the list is being showed in the panel below it. And if I walk away from it, it will disappear. So how does this work? Well, for, first of all, we will go through all of the questions and answers and create a new list. If uh, game object tagged player enters the trigger zone. We're using a Windows 10 interrupt function to send this uh, question answer list to our plugin logic. If you're getting out of it, we're stopping the listening session and hiding the panel. Uh, the Windows 10 interrupt is quite simple. We're having two events and two functions. Get with some voice will start a listening session or actually it will just fire this event and the code behind this will fire up a listening session if this event is called and it will also grab the list of questions and answers from it. Uh, if we want to stop the voice like when we're going out of the trigger zone we want to uh, fired the event for stopping the uh, entire speech session. So the rest of the logic is happening in the exported solution. So the next thing that we need to do is to go ahead and export our solution as a Windows 10 application using SAML. So hit build and it will generate a solution that looks something like this. The only difference is that you won't have uh, these two uh, projects yet. So you will need to add them. Uh, this is uh, described in the uh, tutorial text. But how does this work? So first of all, let's take a look at the speech plugin itself and how we start lis uh, listening to these uh, interrupt events. So we have speech requested here. It will uh, call a function called start listening. And the stop speech requested will call a function called stop listening. So let's take a look at those. These are now inside of the plugin project. And it takes the QA list and it decrypts it kind of into a question and answer list. Then it creates a new speech recognizer, which will understand these questions as a grammar, and it will generate a result if it finds one of these questions. So once this is set up, we're ready to start a listening session. Let me just remove this one. Which is called uh, done by speech recognizer dot continuous recognition session dot start async. We have a lot of different other ways to actually do this. So you can go into uh, the uh, speech recognizer and you can call uh, recognize async or recognize with UI async, which will 
provide you with a user interface or listen for one thing and then kind of stop. What we want is to be continuously listening to what we're saying and if it understands anything, it will respond to it and then continue listening afterwards. So once we're getting some results from this, uh, this one, which means that she heard something that uh, she wanted to kind of react to because it was in the questions list, we will go through all of the questions and check if we found the question that we asked. And then it will create the, a call a function called voice response with the answer we want to respond respond with. This is simply stopping the continuous recognition session for a while and then it speaks and then it starts the continuous recognition session again. We don't want it to start listening to its own answer, right? So the speak function is kind of where everything is happening. It creates a speech synthesizer and scream to it using the input text as uh, the thing we wanted to speak. And then it's setting, sending this stream into a media element, which we're setting inside of the main page SAML here. So this is what plays the, the uh, synthesized voice. And that's kind of everything there is to it. It's quite simple, but uh, this example and tutorial comes with some more stuff. So we've been doing some voice uh, recognition and some speech synthesis, but we also want to integrate Cortana with this. So how this works is that if you fire up Cortana here and ask a question, like, let's, let's try that again. Bot world, did anyone beat me? Yes, you are 1,337 points behind Vladimir. Do you want to play? So that's how we kind of want to Cortana to interact with our game. So the first thing that we need to do is to create all the commands we want our game to, uh, or want Cortana to know about. This is done through our VCD file. It's the voice command definition file. We're having two different voices. One is for checking the score, and the other one is for the start play, I'm sorry, commands. And the way to trigger one of these commands is to say this text. Did anyone beat me? And it needs the name before or after that, like bot world, which is defined here. And if she recognizes this command, it will call a background service, an uh, app service called Bot World Voice Command Service. If it finds the start play command, it will simply just navigate to the application, which means that it will f start uh, playing the game. But this one is a bit more advanced because this is a background service that's continuously running in the background of our application. This one is set up inside of this project is quite simple. What it does is that, first of all, it um, enters the entire background service through the run function. Then it uh, will create a voice service connection based on our trigger uh, parameters and give us a, a voice command. If the voice command that uh, we asked was the check score, we will call the function called send answer. Send answer simply creates a new content tile, which is how we want this information to be presented. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, you have the title only, you have with some icons and text and bigger icons and so on. But we just want to have the tile with the text, so the game icon uh, with the uh, text, which is the leaderboard here, and a title. So the title will be leaderboard, and the content will be this. Uh, obviously, you want to build this one from game logic or uh, by looking up into a database or something. That's 
100% uh, possible. And then we add this tile to the response. And then we create two user messages, one primary and one secondary. This one will be played first. Uh, we will see this one as text and we will hear this, uh, this same tier. If we respond with something that uh, Cortana didn't understand, it will try to ask the same question in another way. So this is totally up to you. This is still what's being displayed and this is what's being spoken. Then we create a response prompt, which is basically a yes or no uh, question. And if you confirm that we want to stop the, the game, we simply request an application launch. So the game starts. And that's everything to it. Let's quickly see how we uh, um, connected this background service with our game. So first of all, I'll show you the VCD file. But we also need to register this one as an app service for the current application. This is done through the package Apex Manifest. You can go to the declarations and you can add an app service and set the name of the command service we want to add for the app service and also the entry point, which is uh, the assembly name. And that's it. That's how everything works and fits together. If you want more details, I suggest going to channel9.msdm.com to check out some of the Cortana uh, sessions from build, which are really good. Uh, if you understand those, you can do everything uh, you want with the voice recognition, the intensities, and of course, uh, uh, integrating your game with Cortana.